in this location, where we presume there to be no space, there can be no nothing. I keep hearing the phrase, the vacuum of space. Mm -hmm. How exactly is it a vacuum? Right. Okay. So when I was a kid, a vacuum was a physical object. Yes, it was. When I heard physicists speak of the vacuum of space, I just imagined all these hoovers in in the sky. Right. So I didn't know that a vacuum was a thing, was it was an, it was a concept. And then you make a machine that duplicates that thing. I just didn't know that. So I learned. Okay. So a vacuum is where there's basically no air. Okay. You can have objects there, but when we think of a vacuum, it's not a place where there isn't anything. It's a place where there's no air molecules moving, Mm. typically. Mm -hmm. All right. Generally, you can have some, and we would still classify it as a vacuum. Because you have to distinguish like a regular old vacuum or a perfect (laughs) vacuum. Right. Now, you know what happens if there's an object and you take away all the air molecules? The object outgasses. Oh. They're, they're air molecules embedded Inside? in the surface of that object, and they start coming out. It's fascinating. Then you heat it, it sends out more. Mm. So it's very hard to make a perfect vacuum. Very hard. So here's an old saying. Nature abhors, abhors a, vacuum. a vacuum. These are people who have never been into space. Most of the universe is a vacuum. Nature loves a vacuum. Nice. Did I, was I Trumpy in there? No. Love. Nature loves <laughs> A vacuum. A vacuum. So perfect, <laughs> preferably Trump brand <laughs> vacuums. Trump, Trump, Trump Bam, Trump Ram vacuums. We <laughs> suck the best. Oh, Chuck, Chuck. <laughs> there's another saying. Uh, there's no such thing as gravity. Earth sucks. You ever hear that? One? Oh, okay. Okay. So uh, the point is, when there's a source of gravity, all well, the air wants to go to that source of gravity, and it leaves a vacuum everywhere else. So a vacuum is simply where there's no air, and it's not anything deep. The odd thing in the universe is that you have places where air, where gas molecules collect. Okay, that, right. Those are the unusual places in the universe. Right. And they're called stars and gaseous planets and the atmospheres of rocky planets. Nice. Yeah. So there you have a vacuum. So Chuck, I want to put, put some closure on this vacuum question. Okay. Okay. This is the second, you know, my third book I ever published. Oh, okay. It's called Just Visiting This Planet. All right. And it's a collection of uh, uh, Q&A. I had a column uh, a pe- with a pen named Merlin. People oh. would ask fun, really playful questions. That's cool. And they collected it. This is like decades old, but there's some timeless content in here. Somebody asked about the vacuum. Mm-hmm. Can I wait? Yeah, go ahead, please. My lap. Well, okay. You can't read otherwise. Okay. Here we go. The best vacuum you will find anywhere. I wrote this. About this 30 years ago. That's cool. The, the best vacuum you will find anywhere, according to four out of five vacuum retailers and five out of five astronomers, is the void of intergalactic space. But we can then ask, is intergalactic space nothing? Hmm. No, it still contains space. If you feel obliged to call intergalactic space nothing, then you must invent a word to refer to the region outside of the universe. In this location, where we presume there to be no space, there can be no nothing. Wow. Let's call it, we're left with no choice. Nothing, nothing. Nothing, nothing. A place where there's not even nothing. It's the nothing, nothing. (laughs) Wow. Okay, I'm just saying. I like that. I'm just saying. So, Chuck, you want some more vacuum talk? Of course. <laughs> I got. I, I feel like you just showed up at my door and dumped some dirt on my carpet. <laughs> <laughs> more vacuum talk. Okay, vacuum so, talk. So, in Death by Black Hole. Right. Okay. Uh, I don't remember what number book this is. So, in the chapter on being dense. Okay. Okay, that's the name Something of the I know a great deal about. <laughs> the range of measured densities within our universe is staggeringly large. We find the highest densities within pulsars, where neutrons are so tightly packed that one thimbleful would weigh about as much as a herd of 50 million elephants. 50 million. And then a rabbit disappears into thin air at a magic show. Nobody tells you that thin air already contains over 10 septillion atoms per cubic meter. Wow. Thin air. Thin air. Right. Okay. 
the best laboratory vacuum changers can pump down to as few as 10 billion atoms per cubic meter. Oh, okay. Best vacuums. That's the best vacuum. In a cubic meter, 10 billion air molecules are still walking around. Okay. Interplanetary space gets down to about 10 million atoms per cubic meter. Hmm. But while interstellar space is as low as a half a million atoms per cubic meter. Wow, that is nothing. That is <laughs> Wow. That ain't that that is, is nothing. I mean, <laughs> okay. A mere 500,000 atoms. The award, the award for nothingness, however, must be given to the space between the galaxies. Intergalactic space, where it is difficult to find more than a few atoms for every 10 cubic meters. Wow. That wins. That's, that's almost... That that's almost nothing, nothing. <laughs> that's almost nothing, nothing. 